Hello, hello, hello! Woo! Here we yeah. go! Welcome to the Crispy Noodle Podcast! I'm Rich Liebig. And I'm Michael Costanzo. And we are here to give you the Crispy Noodle. We are here to give you the most interesting bits in world sports, entertainment, odd news here on an hour-long podcast. Thank you guys for joining us on this week's show. Um, there's something that uh, we're going to mention right off the bat here, and yeah. uh, that is... You know, we're now on episode 401. Yeah. <laughs> which was crazy. You know, we've been through a lot. 400 episodes plus whatever we we want to make the crispy compact communique during It's been a long time. during COVID, whatever that was, or, you know, whatever you want to factor that in. Um and uh you know, we decided to sit down and kind of look through the podcast again with fresh set of eyes and uh, we've come up with uh, kind of a simple, uh, simple conclusion. Yeah, um, people have responded really well to the video format. We enjoy doing the video format, and so we're going to stick with that. Yeah. And basically, going forward, we're going to try to lean more into the video aspect of the crispy noodle, kind of like a crispy noodle 2.0. Uh, you know, you can still get the audio on Spotify, but with the ability to do video. And now our comfort level with doing video and all the new things that it introduces, like being able to play the actual clips of things, the video of things instead of just the audio for people. We figure that's the best uh, way to view the show. Yeah. Now. So we're going to make video kind of the the de facto primary goal of the show now. Yeah. Which yeah. is something I never really thought of was going to be possible when we started this. I mean, when you know. we started, we didn't, I, we, you know, it was just two people talking in front of mics and we slowly, over the course of 400 plus episodes, became more uh, professional, more, uh, you know, advanced. Um, and this is just a natural evolution of everything. Yeah. It's just, you know, taking it to the, to the next level and, you know, focusing on the video content. Yeah. Um, so we're going to make sure that video is the, the, the forefront and the primary goal of this. So we're really heavily going to tell you guys, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Make sure you're following us on Facebook. Uh, and uh, the Spotify link will be working soon yep. so that you'll get video podcast uh, sent to your Spotify account. So this is uh, kind of a, a new era here at the Crispy Noodle that we're, we're, we're officially shifting to video and we're going to look towards things that will benefit the video feed here so we yep. want to make sure you're along with us for the ride so the key things will be subscribing to youtube uh and liking us on facebook because we will definitely debut every episode uh or go live we even go yeah. live sometimes too yeah um and so that's, that's the other thing is you know we got we did the draft a few years we did a few live shows we really enjoyed it and yeah. we just want to continue evolving along that track and you know yeah i mean that's something that we've never had th the ability to do when we were just an audio only show we dabbled in it we you know we we went and we did some tiny video projects here and there but you know it, it's a it's a brave new world now yeah so there's a lot of advantages um, to switching to video is going to give us. Um, so make sure you are along with us for the ride. You're subscribed to YouTube and on Facebook Live and everything like that. So you're good to go. Uh, so that's kind of our little big uh, spiel here. So there might be a little bit of changes here and there that you might pick up on if you're a longtime listener of the show. But the core of the show is still intact. We're still going to give you sports, entertainment, and odd news in our crazy segments. That's right. Absolutely. And you never know what you're going to get here on the Crispy Noodle Podcast. That's right. Uh, so before we get into the news topics at hand, Mike, how are you doing? What's happening in Costanzo Country? Uh, I'm good. Costanzo Country celebrated Memorial Day, just like uh, yeah. the United States. Um, I'm a country within a country. I'm a... I'm a <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, your constituents are country within the United States of America. That's right. Uh, but no, it was, you know, I had a good time. You're like the Vatican. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's just I, I have my own, like, government and laws and way of zo uh, ways of doing things. Um, but, uh, no, I, I enjoyed the long weekend. We got together, celebrated. Um, I have two younger cousins that have birthdays around this time of year, so we did, you know, a combo birthday slash Memorial Day slash, you know, just general get-together. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, we also, um, did, why are words eluding me now? We did a full WandaVision watch yes. through, yep. uh -huh. um, which you were over for some mutual friends of ours hadn't seen WandaVision yet, which I still say is the best 
of the Marvel series. I know you personally like Loki for yeah. the alternate realities type, you know, alternate dimension type thing, but I think WandaVision in terms of That's fair, just yeah. story and character development is just absolutely the best. So we watched that and ate way too much food. Um, but Th- that's, 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 what you, that's what you're supposed to do on a holiday long, weekend. Yeah, that's what the long weekend's all about. It's holiday weekend. It's time to do... It's time to eat as much as you can and enjoy it's, yourself. Well, right. You have that extra day to recuperate, so yeah. you just keep stuffing yourself. Um, so, yeah, I stayed very, very busy uh, this past weekend. Um, how about you? What what have you been up to recently? Um, I assume similar, well, but... I guess the only addendum I would throw in there is I uh, had to watch Kenobi. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh. I still did not get a chance to watch that, but... It, first two episodes, man, very good. Very good. I'm very pleased with it. Um, I like the tone that it's setting. I like where they're kind of teasing with it. At the end of uh, the second episode, there was uh, a... Uh, I mean, it's a revelation to the characters, but we know, obviously, how the story unfolds. But Okay. I don't want to say it. I'll just leave it at that. It's good stuff. Yes. People and, should go watch and, it. And, and right now, it's making me want to see the third episode. I, I can't wait for the third episode to be released. And you know, that's something I've found that the Star Wars series have struggled with a little bit thus far in Disney+. Plus. Is like, when I started Boba Fett, you're like, just keep with it. Eventually, it'll pay off. I'm like, okay. When I started Mandalorian season one, I'm like, I, you know, I don't know. They seem to start slow, but it seems, from what you're saying, Kenobi sort of corrects that, that it immediately hooks you right away. Th- this one did, yeah. I am, okay. I am very excited to see where this goes. And, I mean, obviously, Ewan McGregor is a great acting talent. I mean, that helps having yeah. you know, someone of that caliber on your side. He's like the de facto Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, yeah, I mean... I mean, like, you know, it, I know you always have the classic, but, like, for... I mean, right now, he is synonymous with the role. He's been in the role for a very long time now. It's either him or Jesus. <laughs> That's it. Those him or Jesus, okay. For Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever seen that? No. What oh, are you talking okay. about? You have no idea what I'm talking about. There is uh, some uh, interesting hooligans. Uh, they'll go into, like, uh, Hobby Lobby or yeah. Goodwill or, you know, one of those, like, kind of, you know, thrift, short, th- thrift stores. Right. And instead of, like, a Jesus... <laughs> portrait they'll take it out and put in a picture of Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi nice. and like people won't recognize yeah people, and like people just like and like oh, you have fine. like pictures of like you know I was over at my grandma's house and she had a picture of <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi up on her wall it, it doesn't weird. everybody I mean <laughs> come on now I mean he, he, especially in what was it the the second, I think, Attack of the Clones, when he lets his hair grow out a little bit longer, he does kind of look, look like Jesus. Look a little bit like Jesus. It, it, it fits. All you got to do is add that like kind of I mean, halo I, background. I would pray to Obi Wan Kenobi. I would I'm too. Just, I'm just saying. Look, you know, look. Princess Leia did. <laughs> You're my only hope. <laughs> I, I mean, worked. You know, right. So one could argue, Keno- Obi Wan Kenobi is a a savior. I'm, yeah, I mean, you know. and he sacrificed himself. Yes, he rose again in the third movie. <laughs> There we go. I think we just started a religion. Hallelujah. Are we tax exempt now? <laughs> yes. Call the government up. How we're, many, f- how many subscribers do we have? Do we qualify as a religion? Somebody. Check, all right, uh, everybody right now, subscribe to the YouTube channel so that we can be an official See, religion. A, another benefit to subscribing to the YouTube channel. It just. Praise be. Praise be. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> there you go. Fantastic. So what a way to start the 401st episode, starting a religion. Yeah, we're start- wow. I mean, <laughs> we switched our focus of the podcast, and now we're we men of God. Religion. Yeah. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> it all just happened all in one spiel. That's what happens when you give us an extra day off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's what happened. Yep. Uh, so there you go. Little, uh, <laughs> little personal bit with Obi Wan Kenobi and religion. Fantastic. Uh, but you have probably something else you want to pitch uh, coming up soon, right? Yes. Uh, that is uh, this upcoming weekend. Uh, we are doing the 24-hour game show marathon. It is back. We're back in person. Yeah. Uh, I am so excited that this is happening. I mean, you know, I, 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 I was a little worried, you know, two months ago we were dancing around, like, getting the official green light for it. Um, and also, if you guys remember at that time, there was a spike in COVID cases. Yeah. And Philadelphia is like one of the most stringent cities for COVID yeah. regulations and everything like that. 
So I was hesitant to like be like, are we officially doing this? Because I didn't want to say we're doing it and then right and Philadelphia then announces to, yeah. a lockdown or something. Yeah. So I was definitely on pins and needles every step of the way on this. Um, but we are officially ha- uh, a, a go. It is happening. Uh, we are uh, setting up a full blown broadcast in Philadelphia. Nice. And uh, we play 24 game shows in 24 hours. Uh, my friends Corey, Christian, and Bob, uh, we all get together. We're huge game show fanatics. And uh, we recreate uh, very faithfully, mind you, uh, all 24 games in 24 hours. And it's a load of fun. Um, the broadcast literally goes from 12 noon this Saturday, June 4th, to 12 noon uh, on Sunday, June 5th. It is full 24 hours. We don't sleep. We go the whole time. Yeah, these guys are legit. I've gone to a couple of these marathons when you guys have been local. And uh, you know, the recreation, like you said, is top notch. Um, you guys are hilarious. And also... You do a great job of mixing the classics with the really obscure yeah. and random game shows. And best of all, of course, it's all for charity. Yes. goes to Child's Play. Right. Um, so, I, I mean, the, it's just perfect all around. So you got to, you know, just even if it's for a little bit, just tune in, donate. The Crispy Noodle is going to be sponsoring your game. Um, so, you know, we'll have, we'll, you know, Rich will be there representing yep. the Crispy Noodle podcast. Yep. Uh, and uh, again, that is a good part is literally during that 24 hours, you can tune in anytime you want. You can't go to sleep. Tune in at two in the morning, three in the morning, four in the morning. We'll be playing something. Some of your best stories that you've ever told me come from like hours, you know, 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. Of, yeah. of the the game show marathon where you talk about. Just wild stuff. Like, yeah. Rich was drawing one year yeah. horribly. And yep, we had the drawing. That was one of our video noodles, actually, yeah, it a was, couple yeah. years ago. You tried to convince people you were afraid of basil. Yeah, that didn't that work. Another one. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you, you got to go check it out. Yep. Uh, check it out. It happens this weekend. Uh, gameshowmarathon.com is all you have to remember. You go to that website. You can donate. You can watch straight from there. That's all you have to do. There's no it. other. It's as simple as that. Yeah, we, we've tried to make this as easy as possible. So make sure you remember gameshowmarathon.com this weekend. Go there and watch us play all these games uh, in real time. And and uh, leave. you can leave a chat. You, that's, a, that, that's something else, too, that I always kind of. I, I, I don't forget. I, I kind of forget the hit as much as I should. Everything happens in real time. So we have like a um, uh, like a donation center kind of area whenever yeah. we're setting up the broadcast. And literally when you donate, we have a, like a, 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 an alarm that goes off. <laughs> So if you want to like even like just if you want to like mess with us, like if you want to like try and break our concentration, like we're trying to play games, you can donate and the alarm goes off <laughs> like that's actually like a, like a secret. You can superpower. be you can be devious in your generosity. Yeah, let's put it that way. <laughs> so like you can you can have a little fun with us, too. When you donate, you can time it. So that it happens. If Rich is trying to answer a tough question, maybe you make a donation. Yeah. And then as he's trying to say his response, maybe you make another small donation. Just, you know, every once in a while, just a little drip feed, just to keep him off his game. Yeah. It's totally within the rules. Yeah. That we've set up for this game show. So you're messing with Rich and you're donating to charity. That, I mean, that's... It's a win-win. It doesn't get better than that. That's, that's a perfect day. Yep. So <laughs> there you go. Check us out, gameshowmarathon.com, for all the fun and festivities. And please donate. It does go to a good cause. Child's Play. Uh, they give toys and video games uh, to kids that are in hospitals and shelters uh, all across the country. So this is definitely a worthy goal as well. Your donations, although maybe annoying <laughs> when we're trying to answer <laughs> pressure-filled game shows and quizzes and stuff like that, are well uh, are, are well intentioned and will be going to a great cause. So make sure you do that this weekend. Gameshowmarathon.com. All right, uh, let's get to the show at hand. We do have topics to get to on this week's show, so let's launch into it. First batch of topics is sports with the sports sampler. So you're not good at sports. It's a very small part of life. Sports, 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 sports. sports. In your face. <laughs> yep, sports coming at you in your face. And we're going to hit a couple topics in two minutes or less with the two-minute drill. You ready, Mike? I'm ready. There you go. What do you got, Mike? All right, this week in the two-minute drill, we got one big NFL story. Could L.A. Rams star defensive tackle Aaron Donald be eyeing retirement after winning his first Super Bowl? Donald is under contract until 2024, but he has no guaranteed money left. 
and he wants a new deal. But recent interviews indicate he could also be fine with walking away as well. On a podcast hosted by former NFL stars, Donald said, quote, For me, it's about winning. I don't want to play football if I can't win anyway. So I feel like if I got a real opportunity to win another Super Bowl, then it makes sense to play. But again, it's still a business. We've got to handle the business side of things. And if that wasn't to get handled, then, you know, it is what it is type of situation. I'll be fine regardless. So it sounds like, you know, he won the Super Bowl. If he doesn't get the money, then he's... He's fine with it. Uh, He also said his goal in the NFL was to play eight seasons and then retire. That was his eighth season. Eighth season, won a Super Bowl. He didn't want to play more than eight seasons. So, I mean, he said he'd be at peace walking away if a deal doesn't get done. I mean, wouldn't that be kind of a picture-perfect way to ride off into the sunset, but also for the Rams? Very detrimental yeah. to repeating if they wanted to. I know. If I'm the Rams, I, I would be trying to throw everything but you know but the kitchen sink at him. Yeah. He, he kind of reminds me of being Quentin Tarantino threatening you know that his tenth film's going to be his last. Yeah. The question is, is he crazy enough to actually do it? Yeah. I mean, it's fine and dandy that he's saying that in a podcast to other former NFL players, but. You know, when push comes to shove, is he going to be able to walk away? How many times have we seen players say, I'm at peace with it. I won my MVP slash Super Bowl slash whatever. And then they, yeah, Brady, you know, they, even, even Brady they couldn't Brett, do it. They Brett Favre or Tom brady themselves, you know, like yeah. it happens. I don't know. That's a lot to walk away from. Yeah. Very tough. Yeah. I don't know. So, I mean, I mean, we'll and, see. and also kind of depends on the person, too. I mean, Aaron Donald seems like a competitor. He does. He does. I, I don't know if he can walk away, but we will see. Time will tell. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with he comes back. I, 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 think, I think there's th- too much I, yeah. to walk away from. I think the plus, Rams find a way to get it done. Plus, the Rams have a legitimate good chance to at least make it back to the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. They may not win, but they, they, they have a good chance of of winning the nfc again they're immediate contenders the nfc is a little weak so you know they they're going to be right there in the thick of things it it behooves them to get a deal done with donald at least for one more year yeah while you've got all the pieces yeah yeah stafford is still doing decent because those windows are small Uh, they're a super bowl window you won the one look at the eagles they won it and then they made the playoffs and then they fell apart so you only have Maybe two, three seasons tops. So you just throw it all at him for one more year, see if you get a repeat, and then you start the rebuilding process. Yeah, I think that's that's fair. I think I we'll see, but I think Aaron Donald comes back. Oh yeah, I think so. Uh, speaking of uh, teams that might have an easy path to a championship, let's talk about the NBA Finals. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Uh, the conference finals are done. The NBA championship is officially on the line this week. Uh, in a seven-game series between the Golden State Warriors and the Boston Celtics. Uh, This is looking to be an interesting matchup. Um, It's kind of the old uh, battle between do you want a battle-tested team or do you want a team with a lot of rest? Uh, Because Golden State pretty much cakewalked through the Western Conference playoffs. They, They really didn't have that much of a challenge. I mean, there were several series that they either swept or went to only five games and just didn't look like it was wow. competition for them. Um, on the other hand, the Celtics, they've been battle tested. They knocked off the number one. Uh, they knocked they knocked off uh, or knocked, uh, they knocked off the Miami Heat in a, in a full game seven that went down to the wire and they only won by four. So, you know, it was definitely a close call. It could have been the Miami Heat. Uh, in this NBA Finals uh, on the eastern uh, side of the playoff bracket, um, yeah. Uh, w- what what screams at you here? Th- would you rather have a team that was battle tested, that that really had to fall, fight and claw their way to the championship, or would you rather have a team that looked so dominant that just it seemed like teams just fawned over them? In this particular case, I'm going with the team that is dominant. Basketball, for me, is not the same as football. In football, sometimes you can get that hot hand. You can ride that streak. Basketball really is just how many superstars can you get on the get on the court at once. And if they're all playing at their peak, which it seems like the Warriors are doing, there's really not much you can do to stop 
a truly elite team in basketball, it seems like. I mean, how many times does it come down to the finals and it seems like, you know, pretty much a sure thing for one team or the other? Um, so I'm, I, I think in this case, I would want the rested team, the team that has, you know, handled their business. They didn't need any lucky breaks or missed shots or bounced balls to go their way. They're just going in, steamrolling opponents, and getting it done. Yes, the Celtics have been hot. They've been winning these tough, close games. But that only works for so long. It, yeah, in in it, basketball, I get a vibe it, like if if you're struggling in series, they won by four points in game seven. That's like two wrong bounces away from missing the finals altogether. Yeah. So here, you know? so the main difference between your love of football and... And I uh, use football because I'm stupid. That's the only fine. sport I know. But it makes sense because the, the difference is, is football, you only have one game. It's sudden right. death. Right. Like, think about when the Giants made the Super Bowl at like 9-7 and seven on a, yeah. a sixth seed. You know, they got hot. It doesn't really happen in basketball. Right. In basketball and baseball and hockey where there's series, it's the reason why you have series is to really kind of eliminate those fluke games. Right. Exactly. Because everybody, every team has a bad day every now and then. Right. And you can stumble ass backwards into a win every once in a while. Yeah. So I, I think with the way it's set up and also just the fact that the Warriors have just been I mean, they've been dominant, tear. not just in this season, but as you've pointed out here in the rundown, this is their sixth appearance in eight seasons. So they're just a dominant team, period, full stop. Yeah. Like the and, past and, decade. And Stephon Curry is still at the height of his game. I mean, he yeah. might be getting older, but he's still just draining threes. And as and my mom pointed out, he's cute. So <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that having was a conversation only... about this, she's like, well, he's better than both LeBron and Michael Jordan because he's cutest. He's the cutest. And we were like, okay. I mean, yeah, that was the only analysis we got from Rosa. It's he's full proof logic. Yeah. Very good. Um, but nevertheless, yeah, the Warriors, this isn't really, you know, new territory for them. Six yeah. finals appearance in eight seasons. They're, they're going to go down, I think, as the dynasty of oh, know, yeah. the NBA. Yeah. Um, in the 2010s and 20, early 2020s, yeah, they're yep. a dynasty. Um, and they're well-rested, um, and uh, they're favored. I, 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 all the signs point to the Warriors. I hate yeah. to say it. Cause I agree. I would like to see a competitive NBA Finals. I would like to see possibly even a Game 7 in the NBA Championship, but... Uh, I don't know, man. Warriors These have teams just are looked too so dominant. The teams are too stacked for that to happen anymore. You know, I mean, the the Celtics do have, uh, you know, have some strengths with their defensive side of the ball, and um, but uh, yeah, I I I think Warriors kind of take this one. I, I I really don't see that many ways that the Celtics can really put a stop to the 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 you know stop on the the train that is the Warriors. They've just yeah. been rolling through. Nobody's been able to stop them. Um, they're, 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 they're just they're just dominant right now. Yeah. Until I see different, I just I don't I can't reasonably expect a game seven in the NBA Finals. So that's what I would go with. Um, there you have it, folks. Be careful. <laughs> you know, I would say in a situation like this, if you're betting, just be careful how much uh, you know <laughs> how much juice you got to lay on you know some of these games because. I bet you as time goes on, you know, you're going to have to lay more and more money to bet on yeah. the Warriors. So you may you may actually want to bet right now while it's still even and we're starting the series and right. get your bets in now because because as that money comes in on the Warriors and, and as yeah. the you know game 1 2 3 progresses, I think I think the Warriors probably take this. I hate to say it. Yeah. But, you know, well not, you never know. That's why you still got to play the games. Put some on one, put some on the other, you well that's when, no, you lose money. Nah. Yeah, that's not how it works. You can't do that. Damn. I'm still looking for a way to to cheat the system. No. I can't <laughs> figure it out. You definitely can't do that. I don't, know. don't tell me you're the player that bets um uh ten bucks on red and ten bucks on black. That doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> I want it to work, but it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work like that. Speaking of things not working. Oh man. <laughs> what a transition. What a transition. Yes, because I, ha I I saw these numbers, and I told Mike, and Mike instantly said we got to at least mention it. We got to talk about how much the Phillies suck. Oh, no! We suck again! Yes, it's bad, folks. This is... We're, we're getting to, to serious levels of suckitude here with the Philadelphia Phillies. Um, simply because, you know, not even because of the fact that they got swept by the Mets during Memorial Day weekend, which was atrocious... God, I'm trying to get 
kids in the baseball and the Phillies are just stinking it up. So that's great. Uh, so not only that, but also um, I noticed something uh, in the standings. The Philadelphia Phillies and the Baltimore, Baltimore Orioles uh, both have the same number of wins as of you know recording this podcast tonight. Okay. That's uh, not very good. <laughs> okay, should should we uh should we expand on the numbers? Yes, uh, because the Baltimore Orioles were supposed to suck. Uh, they only spent forty five million dollars on their salary cap this year. For reference, that's dead last. Yes, dead last. Dead last, and also one hundred million dollars under the league average. Yes. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia Phillies are losing money left and right. They are spending $232 million in their salary cap this year. Which, for reference, is fourth and about $100 million more than the league average. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Yes. And you said they have the same number of wins. They have, as of tonight, they have the same number of wins. I don't know if you've looked at the top 10 spenders in the league, but the <laughs> Phillies are also the worst team in the top 10 spenders for this season. Did you did you realize that? Yes, yes I did. Okay, I just want to make sure Every, you everything that. is it's the opposite of everything is awesome. Everything is up in flames. Everything is crashing and burning at Citizens Bank Ballpark. Yeah. It is pathetic. They're just why the Phillies are just his, they're just bad. They're just historically a bad. They're just awful. They spent all their money on bats and yeah. they have no pitching. You can't win games. No. The, and the worst part you gotta is You got to have both. You got to have both. The worst part is is the more baseball is going into this kind of analytics and and you know this future where you're trying to be more you're trying to play the the numbers and you're trying to be more smart with every pitch you throw it's becoming more of a pitcher's game again you know there's there's kind of a, a trend to, to to fiddling around with you know how you do the pitching lineup and the bullpen and everything like that and this is like the Achilles heel of the Philadelphia Phillies. Their bullpen pitching is not getting the job done. It's like it's like the it's like the the perfect storm of ineptitude with a two hundred thirty two million dollar team. It is embarrassing. Yeah. And the thing that really annoys me is there's no salary cap in baseball, so nope. they could have been the second, you know, biggest spending team. The 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 top spending team they could have spent the money to find the pitching and they just didn't i don't know why teams don't spend more especially f you know markets and franchises that are able to just spend whatever it takes just buy yourself a championship because there's a direct correlation here i love looking at these numbers there's a direct correlation here some of the best teams are spending the most money it's the only th it's the only place that you really see this everybody in the top 10 has like a 600 percent winning percentage except the phillies except that there's like two teams it's the phillies and the uh the boston red sox everybody everybody almost everybody else is is above 500 many of them are above 600 um that are spending in that range so just spend more there's a direct correlation but, if you're not getting but, the job done just spend more but it's a simple fix well no it's not it's not that just buy everybody it, it's not that simple either because obviously, I hate to say this, but Joe Girardi, he's getting on my last nerves. It, 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 he keeps he keeps meddling around with the pitching lineup and the bullpen, and he's he has these weird like kind of rules where he's saying like I don't want pitchers who have who have pitched in the last seventy two hours to come out on the mound or something. If they can and let them, it, it's getting to the point. Yeah, like you need to you, Joe Girardi needs to be pushing the panic button. He needs to find any sort of way to make things work. And if that means pulling a you know getting a guy from the bullpen that that pitched last night, do it. I don't care cuz he has been he has been I don't want to say I don't want to say single-handedly, but his decisions have cost games for this team. I mean, I know the players have to go out there and they have to perform, but it doesn't help when the manager is making questionable calls. And, and weird pitching changes. It's 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 all just being like this perfect storm of crap 
that is coming to the Philadelphia Phillies, and the the – the, the chickens are coming home to roost because the Phillies are just falling further and further. And I don't know. I think this might be the worst $232 million ever spent. I don't see this team making the postseason. I mean, probably not. Not, I mean, not at this rate. The Phillies are awful, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just, not looking good. They – bad, you know, strategy, misplaced money. Like, if you're going to spend that much money – just you got to show something for it. It was it was all to the bat, which yeah. is, you know, I get home runs, sell crowds and everything like that. And pitching's kind of viewed as boring. So you want to it's basically to put it in football terms. It's like spending all your money on a quarterback and a wide receiver. And that's it. Right. But which it can win you a championship. But you the teams that win championships are the the well-rounded ones. Yep. That can beat you on either side, you know? Yep. You got to have some sort of, you know, on football to put in your terms. You got to have some sort of defense. Yeah. You can't you can't there, you can't you can't run a special where it's like let a fan pitch an inning. You got to There is there is never at least for, I don't know, I'm pretty sure I'm right in this. I can't remember a team in the NFL that was all offense and no defense winning the whole thing. I I really honestly I don't know, maybe I don't know. I really can't. I mean, it's probably happened, but at least not, at least not recently. But teams, you are gotta usually at that level, you're pretty complete. You, you got to be able to 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 help out the other side of the ball as well. And yeah, for for the Phillies, they're not helping out. They're they're pitching. Just everything's falling apart with the bullpen. Yeah, and it's just it's it's costing games, and it could possibly cost Joe Girardi's uh, career at this rate because. I, I would have to imagine the hot seat is on fire right now for Girardi. He's got to find some sort of way to pull this together. Well, something needs to give. Yeah, and uh, until that happens, I don't know. I think the, the fire might be uh, cranking up uh, in the next couple of uh, weeks or so. But a really bad stat there for Phillies, uh, for Phillies fans. Not looking too good there. Uh, but that is it. That's all we have in the sports realm. But... That's not the end of the show. We still got two more segments still to come. We got the entertainment entree and then the non-fortune cookie odd news all still coming your way when we return from the break. Don't go anywhere. Ready for the weekend? Happy Friday. Hi, my name's Marie, and I'm an artist who's been making Happy Friday doodles every week for over seven years. And now you can own my art collection in this Volume 1 and Volume 2 art series. These doodles span across multiple themes, yearly festivities, various countries, languages, and more. Both coffee table books have something for everyone and are the perfect conversation starter or gift for a friend. Really, anyone who enjoys a good weekend. Available on Amazon, Ingram, Book Baby, Barnes and Noble, and more. Visit happyfridaydoodles.com forward slash books and get your copies today. Let's celebrate the best day of the week. Happy Friday. The Game Show Marathon is back for another record-breaking year. Watch as game show fans recreate 24 of their favorite game shows, all to raise money for Child's Play. Child's Play helps and heals children in hospitals and domestic shelters through the power of play. You can watch the fun go down on June 4, 2022. And you can donate now at GameShowMarathon.com. Game Show Marathon. If you go to Taco Bell three in the morning, this is this is what you're gonna get. Yeah, that clip so. is already coming into play. <laughs> yes, I love already. It. So there you go. Stop. What what happened? The thing yeah, went on. Well, well, how did that turn on? That I weird. don't know. The fart sound. <laughs> the fart sound turned uh, Amazon on? I think the what? fart sound turned on what? my Echo. What the 
I don't well, know. It turned on. What are you doing, Jeff Bezos? What are Jeff you into? Bezos, he's listening to fart sounds. <laughs> he's listening to our <laughs> fart sta- sounds. Oh, my I, God. I changed the trigger word to fart. <laughs> <laughs> I got to fart at it now. <laughs> I don't know what happened. That's really awkward. You're going to have to... Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> How can <Yeah>. I help you? <laughs> you may need some <laughs> b- bell. Do you want me to automatically <laughs> order you uh, Pepto-Bismol? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking to it solely through farts now. It actually, you, you fart into it. Fart once for yes and twice for no. No, no, no. Actually, you fart into the device, and then yeah. Amazon can determine what oh, what, what you medicine you need. Oh, right. Wow. <laughs> That's next level right there. Or what you've been eating and what you want to reorder. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I detect Cheetos. <laughs> Would you like? <laughs> Would you like to subscribe? <laughs> Would you like a bulk order of <laughs> bulk Cheetos? Order. Ooh, yes, please. <laughs> Cheetos ordered. Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> that story took a turn. Yeah. Cheetos ordered. <sighs> okay. All right. There you go. The latest from Jeff Bezos and... And Amazon. It's amazing technology, I tell you. Yeah. Yeah, we're back here on the Crispy Noodle Podcast, flying through the internet. That's right. <laughs> we're flying yeah. through YouTube and Facebook Live and Spotify. Soaring. Soaring. Reaching through. new heights. Yes. With our video feed and everything like that. Once again, just want to remind you guys, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel and on Facebook Live. Well, on Facebook page, so you get the Facebook Live video as well. Uh, we don't want you to be left behind, so make sure you guys are uh, in the know with those uh, subscriptions to our YouTube channel and Facebook, and soon to be Spotify as well. Uh, all right, now let's get into the second part of the show where we go over some movie and video game news and stuff like that in the entertainment entree. And now, the latest in movies. I write to movies. Dear Die Hard, you rock. Especially when that guy was on the roof. Music. I know what that is. That's music. Video games. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite store on the Citadel. Celebrities. You really know Warren Beatty? Yes, I do. I took a leak next to him once at the Golden Globes. And more. You are the all singing, all dancing crap of the world. This is the entertainment entree. All right, there you go. Uh, and with that, uh, we're going to launch into the entertainment entree. Um, but uh, we have just a little bit of uh, sad news to report. And so, as someone who's a big fan of mafia movies, uh, this one definitely uh, hit me right in the hat. Uh, <laughs> I, was just, I was just like a Pauly Walnuts, you know, in The Sopranos. He had a he had a bit where he was uh, somebody like uh, somebody betrayed the group and he was like I feel like I've been stabbed in the hat <laughs> so that's that's what you felt like that's too. what I felt like I got stabbed in the hat um, with this news uh, unfortunately uh, well, movie star Ray Liotta of Goodfellas and uh, Grand Theft Auto Vice City he was the voice of Tommy Versetti yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, passed away at the age of 67. Um, appor- apparently said, uh, he died in his sleep. So, yeah. I mean, Hey, that's a good way for a gangster to, to go out, you know? <laughs> yeah. If you, if you go by the old gangster, you know, life, uh, not many get to pass away quietly. Yeah. Not, not yeah. like that. Um, he was also in a couple of other movies as well. Uh, yep. Field um, of Dreams, Copland, uh, yep. Uh, he was in the new. He was in the Sopranos movie too, uh, Saints of Newark. Apparently, he also had a bit of a resurgence uh, in Marriage Story, the Amazon Prime series Hannah, 
a um, few other things. I mean, he's he's been around. Yeah, and definitely had a good uh, career in filmography. If you want to go check out all of his movies as well, but of course the big one is Goodfellas. He was yeah. so good as Henry Hill. Uh, I just, just I think that's probably his most well known role. Yeah, just uh, obvious and obviously I you know we've talked about mafia movies on end in the past. I mean, Goodfellas is easily you know. One of the creme de la creme oh, yeah. mafia movies. Just everything about that movie is so good. I was even rewatching it on Friday. Like I was just like I, I I had to when I heard the news that he died. I had to re, you know turn it on. I went on HBO Max. The head was on there right now. So flipped it on, watched a little bit of it, cooked up some some dinner. Like yeah, you have to. Did you have yourself some pasta? Well, <laughs> the the funniest thing is I didn't actually have pasta like ready to go i was trying to cl- i was trying to clean out the refrigerator okay so, so you're making a leftover casserole kind yeah of thing. Okay. like it was one of those deals but especially since i knew memorial day weekend was coming up and i wasn't right. gonna be around at the house yeah you know like my, my mom was throwing something we had our thing with wandavision yeah. like i knew i was gonna be out of the house like for you the had, rest of you the had weekend to do a fridge purge what, yeah. what better way to do it than to cook it all up yeah, with Goodfellas, especially yeah. the, especially the scene where they're all like just cooking in the prison, like yeah, you know, like how can you not? You cook? had your own prison cookout kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, like how can you not cook during that during that scene? Yeah, yeah, you know, he, he's he's chopping the garlic with the razor blade. <laughs> uh, there's some guys cooking a steak. How do you like yours? Medium rare, huh? Aristocrat, <laughs> like <laughs> just like. What the hell? It's supposed to be prison, and they're like yeah. living like it's like you know, like they're kings or something. Yeah. Um. Just anyway, yeah, it's a great movie, obviously. Um. But uh, yeah, he was just a great actor. Had been in so many things. Um. Yeah, it it, it hurt. It, it you know, I I I also. Um. I don't not to say like I knew he was getting older, but like sixty seven, I didn't think he was gonna be sixty seven. It's it's shocking yeah anymore when somebody dies you know especially it seems like a lot of hollywood talent you know they usually make it up there a little bit longer than that but um yeah it felt so it was, like it felt it was like very it was, like it was very like sudden yeah you know? very sudden and still felt like he was going a little too soon yeah you know i i felt he had a couple more roles in him yeah you know especially coming from you know those uh you know saints of new york and a couple other things you mentioned yeah he you know, I, I felt like he had a little bit more to give, but um, unfortunately, uh, sad news coming across uh, the Hollywood world with Ray Liotta officially passing away at the age of 67. Uh, all right, but now we'll get into some more brighter news uh, <laughs> because uh, Star Wars had their annual celebration. Yeah. Uh, and it was perfect timing because they had to release uh, Kenobi uh, this week as well. So. It was a nice two for one deal. You had Kenobi that you could uh, watch instantaneously on Disney Plus, and then they had their own announcements. So this was like all this is like your favorite time of year, it must yep. be, because they had a ton of announcements. Um, I mean, where to begin? Mandalorian season three coming February twenty twenty three. That was pretty much a given. Obviously, it's probably Mar or not Marvel, <laughs> Star Wars biggest show right now. Mandalorian. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. So it's no surprise that it's getting a, a third season. Uh, but the big news for me, I was super excited to see the trailer for Andor, which was flying under the radar. Yeah, this I, was was like, I was like, I was like, a lot of people aren't I'm like, too do happy I n- with this. Do yeah. I need a series about this? But the trailer kind of turned me around. I don't know about you. You say people aren't happy about it. Well, I think a lot of people are wondering where is this really going to fit in the Star Wars story? Is it is it is it needed? You know. Okay. But um, I like the more mysterious, darker tone of it. It seemed like yeah. a completely different vibe um, from Star Wars. Yeah. You know, and y- anything's possible in this you know streaming world that we live in. I mean, a lot of people when we saw the Mandalorian trailer, I think a lot of people didn't really think Mandalorian was going to fit either. So, yeah, this is, that's not a good indication of, you know, where the series actually ends up. So, right. You know, my old adage is, you know, and un- until. Um, they proved me wrong. There's certain, you know, like right now, you know, uh, Disney with Marvel, they've just been knocking it out of the park and Disney with Star Wars, other than the sequel movies, the series though, yeah. have been really, really good. You know, Boba Fett was, it was okay, but they really pulled it, pulled it back with those last couple episodes. And 
So I right now I, I'm they, trusting. They them. really I'm, should. I, I, whoever the marketing is over at Disney, rebrand the Book of Boba Fett and call it Mandalorian season two and a half or something. You know, before yeah. I watched it, I was like, oh, Rich is probably being a little dramatic, but no. I mean, there was like a solid like episode and three quarters where it was just Mandalorian. Yeah, like it really should be two and a half. Yeah, <laughs> there was a significant portion of that of that season devoted to Mandalorian. Yeah. Um, which is why they're he's getting a third season. Um, but Andor looks really cool. Yeah. A- and I'm actually quite interested and we don't have to wait that long. Um August thirty first yeah. of this year. So, you know, I think it's a couple weeks after Kenobi is scheduled to wrap up. Um it has twelve episodes Andor. So it's I think their longest show. Yeah. Um, yep. mm-hmm. so it's, it's interesting. They, their longest show is the one that people aren't very excited about, but you know, I think, um, so far they have not let us down. Yeah. So I'm excited to see where they're going with it. Um, but the other big trailer that came out, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. This is the sequel to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Man, oh man, that first game was so incredible and, the second game, all they have to do is build on the stuff from the first. Yeah, the first game was I, so well done. Like, there's really not much else that they need to do. You know, just just make it bigger, better, polish it up a little bit, right? Um, I, 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 I yes, but also I don't. You, you know, want to see I new stuff? Yeah, there's got to be some new stuff too. Right. I, I don't want them to just you know. Don't, carbon don't, carbon copy the first one. Yeah. But don't do a Guitar Hero rocks the eighties. Yeah, yeah. No. There's, don't there's, don't do that. Don't do that. Right. You, you gotta you gotta at least throw some other challenges and some other new things in there as well. Yeah. But it, yeah, it it does look good though. It it looks very and, good. I and mean, Fall in Order was was fantastic. Yeah. Um. I like the slower pace of combat. You know, I liked. You know, they had the the lightsaber and the force abilities, but they also had this amazing world that you got to explore. Um, you know, with like a semi kind of like every level was kind of free form and how you explored it and, you know, how you had to go back and use your new abilities to get to new sections. Um, so I really enjoyed the gameplay loop and the combat and it fills in a part of the history we don't know a lot about, um, you know, as they're purging the galaxy of all the Jedi. Yeah. You know, because that's kind of like, you know, we see what is it? Order 66. And then we see, you know old Ben Kenobi in episode four. Well, now you're going to see Kenobi in, in the Kenobi well, spinoff. Ex- well, right, because that show also covers that same time period, right? Yeah, but Kenobi yeah. is has more of a time uh, gap. There, it, so basically, Fall, Fall in Order happens right after... Immediately after... Uh, Revenge of the Sith. Okay. Um, Kenobi is ten years after Revenge of the Sith. So there's okay. there is some time that has passed. Now... I've heard rumors that Star Wars Fallen Order slash um, Survivor ties or could tie in with some of the series that they're developing for television. Well, I mean, at this rate, you can say that basically safely because there's Inquisitors. Right. are Are they unique to the game? They're, so they were unique to just the game. Oh. But now they're officially into the live action series. Okay. I thought that was something that was always part of the lore. I, I mean, there, there, it always was, but like it, we never saw like a like an actual like so their uniform get up like the whole like it's another thing like it's actually like seen. It was like mentioned, but never yeah. like fleshed out and right. now basically so are you saying they're taking the inquisitors from the game and they're like this is well i mean they are with kenobi there there are inquisitors in in kenobi okay so i'm wondering you know how how much more are they going to share the universe between jedi fallen order and now jedi survival with uh this kenobi tie off oh, there, there's a lot that they can share this could be very very exciting stuff yeah so um, another really exciting announcement, Skeleton Crew. This is a new live-action series coming from Spider-Man No Way Home, uh, the director of uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, it takes place uh, after Return of the Jedi. It's essentially a Star Wars universe coming-of-age story about a group of young um, characters that um, 
I think they're like lost in space or something and they got to find their way home. Um, but it was a completely new announcement. They hadn't, you know, talked about this previous to Star Wars Celebration. So, again, even more new content for people to to enjoy. They're really, Disney is really focusing on these series with both Marvel and Star Wars. They're going full tilt. Well, I feel like they're in a bind in terms of the movies. They don't know where to go with, with the movies, right? Yeah. Because that's why we're getting so many series, real right? Back to back to back. Right. So yeah, they don't they don't know what the next thing with movies should be. They don't know if they should make another episode. They don't know if they should make another trilogy. They have no idea. So instead, put that on the back burner and focus on the TV shows because so far they've been big hits. Yeah, I mean they're you're absolutely right. There's, n- you know, no reason to change it up if it's working. Um, they did, although, mention that Taiki Watiti um, is doing a Star Wars movie. Yeah. They, he, I mean, they, it's very, very early stuff. Right. But so, if anything, he would be the next movie that would come out, but it's still undetermined. Yeah. Can I just say, you guys dodged a bullet by not getting a trilogy from the Game of Thrones producers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that worked out very well. They literally did. I was just thinking about them the other day. They vanished from the face of the earth. They yeah. did Game of Thrones. Whoops. Then they were going to do a trilogy. They 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 cut Game of Thrones short so they could do Star Wars. Then, because they cut Game of Thrones short, it was, you know, the ending was not up to par. So then they lost Star Wars. Then they signed a deal with Netflix and they still haven't done anything. So, yeah, you they're, dodged a bullet. They're over in Belize. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but one final little tidbit from Star Wars Celebration. We got the first image of Indiana Jones 5. <laughs> yeah, just and, randomly. you know, I got to just. Why? Yeah. <laughs> Harris- is Harrison. Why is he? I don't get it. He's so old. Yeah. He's almost pushing 80, I think. Like, oh, my God. Is it going to be enjoyable? Like watching an eighty-year-old Harrison Ford like shamble around on screen, trying to be like in a geriatric Indiana Jones. It, it, like, I, are you looking forward to it at all? Let's let's get to brass tacks. No, I, I it should have been just the trilogy. The the, ori- the 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 three standalone movies were the best, and then this, that the Crystal Skull thing was weird, and now trying to do a fifth one. I Crystal don't know why. Skull came out fourteen years Dear ago. Dear God, really? Yeah, I just looked oh up 2000, 2008. So by the time Indiana Jones and geriatric Harrison Ford roll onto screens, it will have been 15 plus years since the last one. Yeah. We'll still Dear go God. see it in theaters. That's the problem. We'll still go see it. I don't know. Uh, Are you willing to boycott it? I mean, when's enough? Uh, you know. Well, look, here's the thing. I'm getting to the point now. I got to be careful, like, how much money I spend at the movie theater. Like, if I go to the movie theater, it's got to be a good movie. Hey, we were just talking at dinner. You know, I was looking for tickets. I believe it was Doctor Strange, uh, Multiverse of Madness, when that first came out. Um, the theater here in KOP, King of Prussia, that has, you know, they have the 4DX, RDX, whatever, where your seats move and you know, smell vision or whatever. It was like $25 a ticket. Yeah. You, you have a family of four going to the theaters for That's a fun... That's a C-note. Yeah, with, with a, with, you know, fun day at the movies with the kids. That's 100 bucks for tickets, and you, they, they're going to want popcorn and soda. That's another, you know, $50, $60. You're looking at, you know, you're pushing... You get two tickets to Hershey Park for that same price. Like, you know, that's a lot yeah. of money. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm at the point, I got to be careful with, yeah, the movies that I pick to go to, you know, see in the theater. Yeah. So I, I or don't just know. turn on Disney Plus and watch I, all the I, series. I, I hate to say it, it's probably gonna fall in that uncharted territory where I don't want to pay money for it, but I still want to see it. Yeah, just bide your time. Yeah, because that's what I did with Uncharted. I was like, I, I did, I, I, I did not think that was gonna be a good movie, but I still didn't want to see it as a fan of the Uncharted movie, uh, Uncharted video game. So that's what I did. I waited. F- I just. I, I waited for it to come out. Like I'm yeah. not I'm not spending money on it. Exactly. Just bide your time. And so that was uh, the Star Wars Celebration recap. Obviously not too much information, but uh, you know, a lot of fun announcements for twenty twenty three and beyond. Uh, but speaking and make sure you watch Kenobi. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. I have not watched it yet, but everything Rich has told me is very exciting and uh yeah. it sounds like it's definitely worth everyone's time. Yep. Um, but, you know, we mentioned an EA game during that segment, uh, which takes us to this next topic in the rumor mill. EA Games 
is looking to sell or merge. This is pretty shocking news. This rumor's been going around. Um, sources are indicating that EA recently held merger talks with NBC Universal, as well as had acquisition talks with Disney, Apple, Amazon, and other companies. I did not think that I'd ever see the day when EA Games would look to get out of the games business by selling or merging. I mean, yeah. they're the biggest third-party developer. Yeah. And publisher. I mean, that's that's kind of crazy, right? I mean, and they have a lot of they have so, properties. I mean, Madden, and, well, they just lost FIFA, but, I mean, every major sports game, they have Battlefield in terms of shooters. They have... Uh, Star Wars. Star Wars, The Sims. I mean, it's, the list just goes on and on and on. Um, so... I, I don't know what the what the cost would be, but they're looking at that recent Microsoft Activision deal, and they're like, if Microsoft can shell out what was it like eighty billion dollars? Yeah, it's like made up money. It's made up money. So, <laughs> EA is one billion billion <laughs> billion dollar. Yeah, I mean Madden alone. I mean, I I I would have to imagine. Oh, sorry, Activision Blizzard was seventy billion. Maybe EA comes in at eighty. I mean, they have to be bigger than Activision, right? I, I would imagine so, but. Man, yeah, let's just let's merge two properties that I don't like. Uh, merge them together. There you go. Yeah. Electronic Apple. Elect Oh, you oh, you're afraid if they get bought by Apple. This, so this is this is the other question. Who if they are going to be bought, it's going to be by one of the big entertainment companies. Yeah. Like I don't see like PlayStation or Nintendo, they're not going to swallow EA. No, uh -uh. That, it's impossible. There's there's no video game company that can absorb them. It's going to be an NBC, a Disney, an Apple, an Amazon, maybe Microsoft, but maybe no, not Mike, after Activision. No, they just uh, they they spent their money on Activision. They don't have enough to to go after EA as well. So, but I, who I, do you least want to see acquire them, and who do you most want to see acquire them? Because here's the thing, they are still actively pursuing it. Every rumor and every source has said, this is not dying down. They are still actively trying to find a partner to sell to or merge with. My first instinct was Apple, because that would be so, that would ruin me. That would, that I, would I, ruin I, you. Yeah, I don't, I'm not an Apple person. I don't yeah. have anything Apple, um, other than this iPad. And the only reason I have it is because of sound effects. That's it. That's the only reason I have this iPad. Oh. So but you, uh, you love it. You secretly love it. I, I love the app, and okay. it's only available on Apple, bastards. Uh, anyway, <laughs> soon all the Star Wars games will be, too. That would be bad. But, see, so, but here's something else, though. The problem is if you do that, then you're limiting yourself off can, with Android Can I people. actually tell you right now, Apple is also the one I least want to buy EA. Because Apple has no stakes in games. Yeah. They keep trying to push, like, games on mobile devices. I don't know if you've ever played an actual game on a mobile device. It's trash. Yeah, it's never good. Like, the touchscreen controls, I need actual joysticks and buttons. Yeah. It just it doesn't. It never works. It never works. If Apple were to buy EA. I tried, I tried to download a couple of games when I was on the flight to New Orleans. Yeah. And, I, yeah, I just couldn't do it. It, it, it's, it, 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 it's just not it just doesn't feel good to play right. to play on your phone screen yep. i mean yeah sure things like i don't know tetris or like plants versus zombies or whatever little point and click game those work but i'm not playing jedi fallen order no. on an ipad uh -uh. you know with touch controls it's not so apple for me personally even as clearly i have the computer i don't want it yeah Unless Apple is going to make an actual video game console. Which they're not going to do. Or if they just buy EA and continue to let them operate as they are, which I find hard to believe. Yeah, I don't think Apple will do it. I also don't really want Amazon to as well because they've mismanaged every game project that they've had. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, Honestly... Disney sounds like a fantastic partner. Yeah. Look what they've done with the Star Wars video game properties. Yep. Right? They, so um, you already have that tie-in. Also, I, I believe EA's, d you know, done a little bit with the Marvel properties as well. Um, it's like a natural progression, right? I would think so. Between those services that you listed. Yeah. But, um... And Disney has no problem with being like, hey create games out of these franchises and they just want to make the money from having somebody create them. They they don't want to publish 
They don't want to be active in development. They don't want to make a console. They just want, you know, just just like they're, you know, all the film divisions. They're like, go do your thing. Make yeah. us money. Right. Yeah. As long as as long as you're paying your dues to the House of Mouse. <laughs> yeah. They don't care. It is getting to be like it a is weird, very mafia like. Yeah, like a weird criminal syndicate. Like people yeah. forget that Hulu is technically owned by Disney, as is ESPN and the History Channel. Like and, Disney and, has and a they, lot. Of, they all kick their money up. They all kick their money up, and Disney's like, you do what you you keep reporting about how aliens built the pyramids, and you keep making hand Handmaid's Tale. They don't care. They yeah. don't care. All right, how about we leave uh, this depressing topic and and go to. <laughs> Go to more. Let's uh, talk about another video game topic. Yeah, that that could be better. This this might be a little bit better. This one is absolutely better. So, we talked previously about Sony and PlayStation wanting to get more into the film and TV uh, sector with video game adaptations making their way to the big and small screen. Um, back in 2021. Uh, it was revealed that PlayStation had about 10 video game adaptations in the works for TV and film. Obviously, we've seen one of those already with Uncharted come to theaters, and um, it did fairly well, you know, pretty good at the box office. Critically, not so good, but Sony doesn't care because that's... Still made money. They made a Venom sequel, so you (laughs) you know where they stand. Yes. so after the success of that and all the other hotly anticipated projects, they were able to reveal more of their slate of upcoming adaptations. And I have to tell you, I am very, very excited for what uh, is coming down the pike from uh, Sony and PlayStation in terms of adaptations. So we already knew about The Last of Us on HBO coming um, as early as later this year, potentially early in 2023 is the latest projection. They also have Twisted Metal. <laughs> That's coming. crazy. That's a weird one. Yeah. That's a weird one. But that is fully cast, uh, ready to go. They're in pre-production, coming to Peacock in 2023. You have a Ghost of Tsushima movie coming to theaters to be determined. But they're working on that fantastic Japanese samurai game. Um you know, coming to the big screen. Now, here we get all the newly announced and confirmed projects, and this is where it gets really exciting. First, I'll start with the least of them. Gran Turismo, either a movie or a TV show. They don't know yet. Yeah, woo, more driving. That's very weird. I don't know how they're going to do that because it's a racing sim. Uh, people love cars. People love cars, and they're hitting all their demographics look, here. Look, there's nine Fast and Furious movies made. People exactly. love cars. So do you think it could take more of a fictional route or more of like a, uh, what's that show, Top Gear route or something like that, where they um, like just show off the cars? Um, I, I think it would be more or fi- like a, fictional, but... I don't. There's no story. Yeah, you, it's you know, just a racing sim. There's no story. But yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know if you want to... Do like a carbon copy of Top Gear though. Yeah, or that's maybe true. you could. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how much demand there is for another car show. Gran Turismo is a huge. I've never played it, but it's it's a huge game franchise. Yeah. People love it. Right. I, I'm like I, you know. Maybe there is. Maybe maybe you could have another essentially show built like Top Gear potentially, but I'm not concerned so much about that one. It's yeah. the next two that I'm really excited about. First up, God of War yeah. on Amazon Prime. Amazon acquired the rights to God of War. That's going to be good. Yes. Amazon is all about the fantasy. They got the Lord of the Rings thing going. They got the God of War thing going. Um, really exciting stuff over there. Um, I saw a rumor. Um, Dave Batista as Kratos. I think that'd be fantastic. <laughs> no, you disagree? Oh, uh, really? He, he's in the running? Well, he said that he wouldn't mind. People also want Jason Momoa, which I think would also be a... F- that could be a little bit better. That, I, I I would rather have Momoa than You don't think Batista. Dave Bautista could pull it off? No. He's too he, comedic in his styling. N- no, he's he's not really much of like a... He doesn't really deliver lines very well. That's why he works really good as Drax. Drax. Well, you know what? That's a good point. That's a good like, point. Like, even... I hate this... You know, coming from a wrestling background... Like I know a lot of you know people behind the scenes that Batista was never good at promos. Oh really? His, his his thing was all about the physicalness that you know he had the look, you know he had the yeah. muscle. That's why he, he works as Drax. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Like when it came to like promos and stuff like that, he wasn't very good at. That's that. That's a good point. You know, I I just remember how much I like him in Guardians, 
But you're right. It's not a it's not a straight one to one translation. Just because yeah. he's good in Guardians doesn't mean he'll be. Well, he, he works well as Drax because he he is supposed to be Drax, off with his timing. Drax off. doesn't emote. Right. Like that's that's, why, that's the whole thing. Right. He works great as that. Okay. But as actual like leading a series like as Kratos, so no, it has would, to be Jason Momoa. Then. I would rather have Momoa, but I'm sure there's other people you could find. I'm sure there's other people. Yeah. Um. But we also have. Again, very. <laughs> to be honest with you, Triple H kind of looks like him a little bit. I don't if, know if, if you're going the wrestler there's, route, right? There, there, there's, there's a picture of Triple H where he let his beard grow. He, he kind of could pull it off. Oh, but wait a second. Here's a good point. God of War, the Greek trilogy, or the New Norse saga. Oh, uh, I guess I'm thinking of the Norse saga. So I, I don't know which one they'll go with. Uh, uh, oh well, that's a good I don't point. Know. I never Tri- thought of that. If you have to go wrestler, go Triple H. Go tri- Triple H they, looks looks like you could pull it off. There you go, Sony. The official recommendation. Don't go Batista. No, sorry. But how about this one? Um, <laughs> sorry, Batista. <laughs> sorry, I don't know. sorry. I'm just giving my honest opinion here. Hey, but I love I love Batista's Drex. He's fantastic oh yeah. oh as Drex. Yeah. That um, role works. <laughs> sorry. So we'll 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 have to gonna, see. Evolution's gonna beat me up outside in a minute. <laughs> what? Who? That he was in a stable oh. called Evolution. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna meet me outside. They're gonna beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> well, just be careful. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, next up, though, Horizon uh, Zero Dawn slash Horizon Forbidden West coming to Netflix. Uh, there they have the sci-fi um, focus. Um, so. I'm really excited about Horizon. You've never played it, but all you need to know is giant robot dinosaurs. Yes, you you, you were okay. sold on that. I, I'm sold on just that, but more than that, it's a fantastic sci-fi plot about the world a thousand years in the future after we've reverted to tribal states of living. Um, you know, we've we modernized, everything collapsed, everything reverted back to banging sticks and rocks together, but also there's these remnants of the quote-unquote old ones of our past highly evolved civilization that these new humans have to figure out and navigate. Um, so it's just a really cool sci-fi universe. Um, and in terms of uh, the main character of Aloy, um, you never watched Game of Thrones, but there's a character, Ygritte, in the show, fiery redhead archer from the far north who is pretty much other than the accent would be a perfect one-to-one match for Aloy. Um, and so horizon, you, I, they're covering all their bases. They got their fantasy. They've got their sci-fi. They've got the cars. They've got the dystopian post-apocalyptic last of us. They got the samurai movie. They also have Jack and Daxter, which would be a good animated film for the kids. It's possibly in development with the director from uncharted. It's, Basically confirmed that they're working on it, but they haven't fully announced it yet. So that leaves eight out of the ten adaptations, if you include Uncharted and Jack and Daxter. So a simple but big question, what's next? Are there any Sony franchises that you think would be good grounds for another adaptation? They're covering a lot of bases here. Yeah, it feels like they've kind of hit their marks here with all the different audience segments. It's really smart how they're going about it. Yeah. yeah, they got movies and TV shows of all kinds of genres. Um, the one area that I could think they use a little bit more is maybe kids programming. They have a lot of stuff for older audiences in both movies and streaming, but Sony also has things like Ratchet and Clank, Little Big Planet, um, where they could easily make like a family-friendly movie or TV show, um, Astrobot, things like that. So they have a little bit of you know stuff they can play with there. Um, my only regret is that they can't do Spider-Man. Yeah, because they've they already have Spider-Man. Yeah, it would be weird can't. to do a video game adapt or a movie adaptation of the video game of the video yeah, game. Yeah, no, you can't which do is, that. That's like a little too twisty, turny. Yeah. Um, but does anything spring to mind in terms of Sony properties, past, present, or future? Yeah, I don't know. I I, I think there's so much to pull they, from. I think they've covered their bases with this initial launch here. Yeah. I definitely want to see The Last of Us. That that the absolutely Last of Us, yeah. should be a, a a a very good series, especially with uh, what's his name from Mandalorian. Why can I never remember his name? Yeah, Mandalorian. <laughs> Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's his name. Um, yeah, really excited to see that as well. I'm excited to see all of them, honestly, except for Gran Turismo. 
that one doesn't interest me at all. But that's okay. It's not for us. Yeah. You know, that's what all the other ones are for. And I can't wait to figure out what those last two adaptations are going to be. For some reason, they've they pretty much have announced everything except for those two. So could it be a future project? Could it be like an old classic that they're bringing back, like Twisted Metal? Like Twisted Metal hasn't been a thing since like PlayStation 2, really. Yeah, but Twisted Metal does have a storyline, so it I'm does. interested to see how they, they pull really, that off. really, and Anthony Mackie is going to be starring in it from wow. what's his what the Captain Falcon Cap- or whatever. Yeah, whatever. Right? isn't that Captain Falcon? <laughs> Falcon, Falcon, and the Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier, Captain Falcon, Captain Falcon, same difference. Yeah, whatever. Uh, so. All right, so there you yeah. go. That's the latest uh, with uh, Sony there, and with that, it is time to leave the entertainment realm. And let's venture into the third and final portion of the show, the non-fortune cookie-odd news. We've been talking about cool and its uh, ramifications and how it applies to the hip scene. But maybe you could give us some examples now of the opposite of cool, uncool. Just exactly what is uncool. My nipples look like milk duds. Holy shnikes. It's time for the non-fortune cookie-odd news. It's not of this world. I don't know exactly what it is or what it's doing, but this is not human intelligence, okay? It's not human intelligence we're facing! How you doing? <laughs> See? I'm doing great. Mandadabasata. I don't make this stuff up. I'll take a pound of nuts. That's a lot of nuts! That'll be four bucks, baby! You want fries with that? <laughs> I've seen the celery dance across the baseball fields. You had me at meat tornado. No, 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 go past this. Past this part. In fact, never play this again. Okay. <laughs> uh, what, what does that mean? And now it's time for the non-fortune cookie odd news. So sit back, get everything you need to get from the kitchen. Be sure and empty the bladders. Go to the bathroom because you're in for hell, right? Ah! Ah! Woo! Odd news. That's right, everyone. It's time for the non-fortune cookie odd news. Here in this segment, Rich researches the news, he reads the news, and I react to the news. He finds a weird and wacky story uh, and keeps it hidden from me, which ensures that all my reactions are my genuine gut reactions to hearing these stories for the very first time. I don't know what's about to happen. He doesn't know what's about to happen. And you guys don't know what's about to happen because these stories always take us down wacky and wild paths. And I'm ready to get started. Um, Do I even need to ask where we're going? Now, who is this f- guy in Florida? It's Florida, and they're crazy. Yep, no. Yeah, it, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I figured. Florida is just firing on all cylinders lately. I mean, should we expect anything less? Yeah, right? I, I, I think uh, this is going to be the way it is to come for some time. Okay. Especially, so with, especially with the summer. Yep, it's time the, for wacky it's, Florida it's the heat. stories. It's the heat. My girlfriend was talking about how she knew somebody who lived in Florida and got out because it was too crazy. And that person said it is absolutely 100% the heat that scrambles their brains. All right. Well, uh, so this, how scrambled are they in this story? Right. This, this might be uh, uh, a reason for this story as well, uh, because a 64 year old retiree was arrested on Tuesday after he exposed himself to female beachgoers, according to cops. Well, it was very erotic. Yes, indeed. It was erotic. Okay, pretty standard so far. Yep. Naked guy in Florida. Uh, Investigators say that 64-year-old Charles Hickson was busted Tuesday afternoon for indecent exposure at the Sunset Beach, uh, which is uh, outside of a Tampa suburb. Okay. So, you know, he was just hanging around the beach and... Literally hanging. Yeah, literally, yes, literally hanging. Well, it was very erotic. Yes, indeed. It was erotic. Uh, Eyewitnesses said that They thought things weren't looking good when Mr. Hickson arrived at the beach just wearing a Speedo. Oh, boy. Uh, Yeah. It's already a recipe for disaster. Uh, No. No. uh, No, 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 that's okay. Nobody should be wearing a Speedo. It it just doesn't look good. No. I need my swim trunks to, like, come down to my knee. Thank you very much. (laughs) Yeah, the, it exposes way too much. It's, yeah. It's, it's just not good. No. You need to leave something to the imagination. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a little too revealing. Yeah. So uh, when he arrived at the beach, <laughs> he scouted out the area. So oh I guess gosh. he was uh, choosing, you know, where the hot babes were or something. Yeah. I don't know. 
He had to he had to narrow it down where he was Where's gonna the go. Best spot to show off what I got here. Take your damn clothes off. Yeah, he's trying to figure it out. Uh then he jumped into the water. Uh uh that's, that's weird. You're gonna shrink up if you do that. Uh well n- I don't think so in, in his case, uh, because oh. then the uh victim in the police report, who is a twenty eight year old woman, uh notes that Hickson floated near her n- near her. Oh my god. <laughs> It's just weird terminology, isn't it? Like, yeah, he's floating near you. He floated closer. He's floating. He's in. He's in your. It vicinity. doesn't sound very threatening to have something float towards you. Yeah, this cannot be made good. It's shameful. It's a shameful, shameful day. Uh, Did he have a? Was he at a full mast? Well, uh, by the time he got near the 20, 28 year old female victim. That's when he allegedly exposed himself and took off the Speedo uh, and allegedly held his penis in his hand while staring and grinning um, right at the 28-year-old female victim. That was a bit of a nastiness last night, yes? Some very extreme nastiness, yes? Yes. <laughs> That's so... That kind of sounds like him. Yes! Yeah, yes! Oh, yes! 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 Yes. Oh. oh my God, that's so pervy. How are you? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Good day in the water. Yes. <laughs> exactly like that. Just he's just rocking back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yikes! The the woman <laughs> noted that. She made eye contact with Hickston. Oh, no. You shouldn't make eye contact. And (laughs) things became very (laughs) controversial. As that's when she looked down and noted that he had his penis in his hand, which I guess this is probably the the good part about this. She noted that it was rather large. (laughs) So I guess that's nice. You have it down for the record in the police report. I I guess, yeah. I mean, after jumping in the water, for it to be still described as... Nice and large. Yeah. I mean, it's this is the complete opposite of shrinkage in Seinfeld. This yeah. is the complete opposite. This guy is, he's good to go. He, like, watered it and it grew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a flower. It's like a flower. <laughs> he, he's blooming. Oh, God. Oh, Why? He's blooming. Why? Take your damn clothes off. Oh, my gosh. That's, I, I never thought you would. He's a grower. <laughs> We cannot achieve much with so small penis, but you, wow, penis so big, so big penis. <laughs> that actually should be in the police report, too. Yeah, so big penis. Yeah. I mean, so, I, I, but then again, so this may be his undoing, though, um, because that's when the woman felt uncomfortable and instantly ran back to her uh, area with the beach towel and called police. I mean, yeah, that, that sounds like a reasonable reaction. Yeah. To have somebody float, masturbate near you. I assume he was. And he's fully, like, ready to go. Yeah. Like, I mean, Ugh. look, if you were trying to pose this off as an accident. He's like, oh, I didn't realize people were around. Or, or eh. maybe like, oh, a wave hit me and I lost my Speedo or something. Like, and also, waves are arousing. <laughs> I don't know how you explain that one, but well, that one, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I would imagine you would kind of want to try and be like, oh, it was an accident or but something. But they locked eyes, yeah. and he was like, hey. Yeah, and the, yeah. the pole is up. Yeah. <laughs> so he's just sailing. <laughs> well, he doesn't, but he doesn't have a, uh, he doesn't have the, the sail, though. It's, the, just, he's got it's a, only the pole. He's got to he's gotta, uh, spin the gib or whatever <laughs> What, what is it called? I, Give the, I don't know. Swing his dinghy. I don't know. Swing his guess. <laughs> Can he swing his dinghy? <laughs> Can someone help him out here? We cannot achieve much with so small penis, but you, wow, penis so big. So big penis. Uh, yeah, just. <laughs> so did he take his dinghy back to shore? Uh, so, um. <laughs> this is, uh, it, this is, uh absolutely nuts here um oh wait and then i just lost the Uh of course i I got so excited i lost the the page here all right here we go now we're back on it um so uh other witnesses uh did not see him expose himself 
Um, and Hickson denied that anything happened. Um, but people in the water did did note <laughs> that he was being very creepy <laughs> <laughs> and noted that his hands were constantly around his groin area. Oh, God. Uh, he was still arrested and charged with exposure of sexual organs, which is, which is a misdemeanor. So, <laughs> he, I, <sighs> it could have been worse. He, he, I think, he, I think he, he, it should have been bumped up a little bit there. Think, oh, you think the charge should be bumped but up? But I, I, I guess maybe you could. Yeah, argue, where's the lewd and lascivious behavior? Yeah, I don't know. I guess may, it's just because it's just maybe, one person. Maybe, maybe he could argue like, oh, the wave knocked off my speedo, and I was just holding on for dear life. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I was holding on to my mast. Yeah. <laughs> It was very important. I mean, I, I, I guess he could, yeah, sort of wriggle his way out of it and be like, oh, you know, it just, I was floating there and a wave came by and just ripped my speedo clean off. Yeah. Um, but I can't end the end the odd news on that. Uh oh. You know, oh. that was like a good like s- story, but yeah, it's like a B minus story. It, it was all okay. right, but yeah, I, I felt like we need a little more punch. So okay, luckily. Just as I was about to close out the page doing research on this, another oh, no. another Florida story happened. Now, who is this f- guy in Florida? It's Florida, and they're crazy. We get a twofer. We are truly blessed yes. on this podcast. This is what happens when you subscribe on YouTube. You that's get, right. You, you get, get two story. stories. That's right. Well, this is... Uh, a, a very similar story. This doesn't happen on the beach, but instead this happened outside of a closed Mexican restaurant at 2.15 <laughs> in the morning. Okay. Uh, cops say that 29-year-old Kenneth Gray tripped a silent alarm trying to, jump a fe- trying to jump a fence and trying to get into a closed Mexican restaurant. Uh, when cops arrived on the scene, they saw that he was naked trying to break into this joint. Of course. Uh, when he was being arrested and being thrown into the county jail, they asked him why he did this. And he said that I needed to break into the Mexican restaurant to cleanse myself spiritually. And I was doing a chant to clean, to clean my soul. Hey, 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 hey. Yes. <laughs> so he claims that, <laughs> that he had to he break needed- to break into a Mexican restaurant. Yes. That is his, the epicenter of his, his holy pilgrimage. Yes. And that while he was going to get in there, he was going to c- say some sort of chant, and that would cleanse his soul. Oh, at, burrito. At 2.15 oh. in the morning. Hey, 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 hey. And he's naked. I mean, what better time to cleanse the soul than at 2.15? Uh, the unfortunate the restaurant was called Red Mesa Cantina. So sorry if you if you're familiar with that restaurant. <laughs> they had this guy uh, breaking in. Uh, he said that the chant was going to cleanse his spirit and he would be all right, but he had to do it inside the restaurant. What? Why couldn't he figure this out a couple hours earlier? Why did it have yeah. to be at two fifteen in the morning? Yeah. Why is he just he like either he's already awake or he wakes up he's like oh my god my spirit ah i need to cleanse it i need to cleanse (laughs) yes not only does he need to cleanse it but he needs to go to a very specific mexican restaurant yes this red mesa cantina does it lie on some sort of like uh, spiritual nexus like there's like a i want to see like the da vinci code like Oh my God! It runs through the parallel. <laughs> right, exactly. This is like where all the spiritual energy he wakes and, up. And oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> it's the Red Mesa Cantina. It's been at Red Mesa all along. <laughs> it just bursts out, runs naked. <laughs> Didn't even there. have time to put clothes on. Yes, this is very important. Well, when you're cleansing the spirit, you can't have the clothes get in the way. Yeah. You know, the, the clothes are just a barrier between you and your spirit and and the cleansing. Uh, he is uh, locked up in lieu of a $250 bond. That's nothing. Uh, he has been <laughs> issued a restraining order to stay away from the restaurant. Okay. So unfortunately, if this was needed, he's never going to clean his spirits. Well, th- yeah, this is upsetting. His spirit will be will be tainted yep. forever now. Uh, and he's been charged with loitering and prowling. Prowling? 
We've never got that before. Yeah, that's prowling. new. Prowling. Prowling. That's an official crime in how Florida. Do you, how do you prowl? I, I How's guess it different than loitering? You, you show up is, naked and demanding, I need to is, cleanse my spirit. Is prowling like an ang- like a like a malicious form of loitering? Like it, you're, if you're just hanging around, that's loitering. But if if you're like hanging around and you have shifty eyes, that's prowling. I am a horny hobbit. Who da? Who da? Oh, I have what my hobby? horny and my horny hobbit goes. Yeah, there you go. That's his chant. <laughs> that's more more of his chanting. He needs to he needs to get it all on the record. <laughs> okay then. It's great to be alive! Celebrate it! I just really want him to be Gary Busey. <laughs> that's just really what I want. That's, that's what I imagine. This guy's like crazy lunatic, hair like disheveled. And he's just, uh, just chanting. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. There you go, yeah. I had a dog named Chili. And <laughs> there you go. Maybe he had a Chili dog. Uh, so but- I, I found some information on prowling, if you're interested. Oh, yeah. What's the so difference? So in PA... It's it's the same loitering and prowling at nighttime. Whoever at night time maliciously loiters or maliciously prowls around a dwelling house or any other place used wholly or in part for living or dwelling purposes belonging to or occupied by another is guilty of a misdemeanor of the third degree. All right. But nobody was this is PA, but nobody was living at the Mexican restaurant. I guess it works too if it's a spot of business. I don't know. I guess a person but commits a violation if he loiters or prowls. And yeah, it's it's all the it's all the same thing. I want to know what makes prowling different than loitering. We we gotta get a lawyer here on the crispy noodle or something. We really do. We we need a lawyer. We need a judge. We got we have we have a bunch of questions. We need to every ask time them. these things come up, I have so many questions. Like because they charge them with loitering. And prowling. Yeah. They're like, you loitered, but you also prowled. Also, they did nothing to address the fact he was naked doing this. Yeah, where's all the loot and the city? Yeah. So the indecent, ex- I guess nobody was around to be Flor- exposed we've, to. We've gotten to the point in Florida odd news stories where being naked is just like, oh, that happens. <laughs> that's not even that's not even a charge. That's why the first guy barely had any. He was like, what was it? It was, it was like, they were like, eh, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Like he was naked. In- indecent exposure, yeah. Yeah, they go to the victim. They're like, what? He was exposed. He's exposed. So what? Yeah, it's Florida. The cop, the cops, like this is every this is every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's every day. What <laughs> makes this my, special? Monday, Tuesday, like, Florida <laughs> days. Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday, Florida <laughs> days. Friday, Saturday, Florida days. Naked <laughs> around, <laughs> around <laughs> Florida. What the hell's happening? <laughs> These Florida days are coming and they're naked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, there you go. I had two Florida odd news stories I had to mention there. It was Both too na- naked people in Florida. Yeah, it, it is the heat. They wouldn't be naked if it was if it wasn't so hot. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're onto something. The, the yeah. heat is just driving them crazy. Uh, but with that, we got to start wrapping this episode up. You got two for the price of one on this special episode. It's a special deal here. Yep. Thank you guys for supporting us as we make this full transition to the video. Uh, centric version of the crispy noodle if you like what you heard make sure you hit that subscribe button on youtube make sure you follow us on facebook we're also on twitter and instagram as well so we're all over the the social media hub of blue and you can stay in contact with us with those channels that's right so make sure you subscribe there and like we mentioned we'll also have something up on spotify as well so just to recap YouTube, Facebook, and Spotify, the best places to check out the Crispy Noodle Podcast. In addition to all of that, you can also go to our SoundCloud page where we have some uh, yep. some little sound bits and stuff from previous episodes. Yep, mini noodle promos from the past. So That's if you right. want to listen to some of our greatest hits, <laughs> our goal, our greatest hits, our golden oldies. Our goal, yeah. Well, now go. that we're like 400 plus episodes into this thing. Yeah, go to our SoundCloud page as well. We're, we're right there. Um, and you can tune in there as well. Yep. Um, if you want to contact us individually on Twitter, I am at Rich Liebig, R-I-C-H-L-I-E-B-I-G. And I'm at Mikey Costanzo, M-I-K-E-Y-C-O-S-T-A-N-Z-O. Send us all of your sports, entertainment, and odd news stories, and we'll be sure to uh, feature you here on the podcast, give you a crispy noodle sausage shout-out. The odd news stories go to Rich, of course, so that I don't see them. So that's, make sure you get in touch right. with us there. Uh, oh, by the way, and also one more plug, Game Show Marathon yes. this weekend. So if you want to see me uh, <laughs> without sleep 
and uh, trying to concentrate on various game shows and hosting various game shows. Make sure you go to Game Show Marathon this weekend. We start June uh, fourth Saturday at noon. We go till June fifth Sunday at noon. Twenty four game shows, twenty four hours straight. It is this weekend. GameShowMarathon.com. Check it out to watch the stream and donate for a good good cause. Make sure you do that. Uh, but for right now, we got to start wrapping this episode up. This has been the Crispy Noodle Podcast. Let us be the Crispy Noodle in your vegetarian salad of life and boring news. Anything else, Mike? No, that's it. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. All right. We'll see you guys next week. See you guys later. Bye-bye, all you fine people. Some of us have great stories, pretty stories that take place at lakes with boats and friends and noodle salad. A lot of people, that's their story. Good times, noodle salad.